Namaste to both of you. Namaste. Hi Alvin and I think I want to first start by sending you a lot of gratitude vibe whether it's virtual because for us accepting our invitation to be on this platform and you know giving those beautiful information that you're going to to all our beauty queen aspirants here you know I know Philippines is a country that is very zealous about pageants and so is India it's picked up here and I think every girl wants to participate and see that crown on her head so thank you so much once again for coming in Alvin you're very welcome, and it's actually an honor for me to be with both of you, the Queen Makers of India. So it's more of an honor for me to have to be here, both in joining our lives. I'm, I'm starstruck right now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm in awe with you, Alvin. Let me tell you, when I see your predictions, your analysis, I mean, you're so conscientious about it, and you put in so much heart and soul. It just gives me immense pleasure to see you all the time. So I think we are just in the same alignment. That's you know, empowering girls and also giving them the right information about the pageantry world. And Elisa and me are very enthusiastic when it comes to, you know, educating and teaching. So I think it just goes hand in hand, whatever we are doing at this stage. Exactly. Thank you very much. That's really the main purpose why I started is to empower these girls because I may not be a participant, but I understand the effort that they are putting behind all the preparations and everything. So sometimes it's really great to recognize these efforts. Absolutely. So Alvin, my first question for you is, I want to get started super quick because I'm just so enthusiastic yeah. at this stage. How did your interest, your inclination towards the pageantry world start? Give us a little insight about your journey. Well, um, pageantry is not new in my country. So I have always loved pageants. And the moment that I fell in love with it, it's it's more of a personal thing to me because to others, pageant is more of an entertainment thing. But to me, it helped me develop myself when it comes to my confidence, the way I practice my interviewing skills when I apply for a job. It really helped me a lot, to be honest. And I have to be thankful to the world of pageantry who helped me transform with how I speak, with how I present myself. And I'm just thankful. And every time... This is, I actually wanted to create content as well on all my experiences when I applied for a job because it's so amazing to see these reactions from the judge, from not the judges, but the interviewers saying that the way I answer seems like I am competing in a beauty pageant. And I told them, yes, that's really the effect of how much I love beauty pageants. But at the same time, answering in a confident but in a truthful and honest way still. Yeah. Yes, I totally believe. I think pageantry, what gives you leverage in the entire game is your authenticity. And when you bring that kind of originality to the table, I think that's what makes you stand apart. So I completely adhere to what you just said, Melvin. And uh, Alvin, sorry. And also one more thing, Alvin. Uh, you know, like you said, pageants metamorphize a contestant, which is so true because sometimes you don't have hidden potential and when you participate and you're out there on that platform, you just transform. So I think I completely stand by your first thing. Okay, secondly, Alvin, just tell me how uh, how do you get into analyzing a delegate? Like, because it's a tough task, let me tell you, because there are delegates from all around the world. What is the first thing you look at, the first very element? It's actually very difficult, to be honest. Not people know how much effort do we put, not only me, but other pageant bloggers as well, but I will be speaking in behalf of my experiences. For example, Miss Universe, after mm -hmm. watching all the preliminaries, preliminary, mm -hmm. uh, not preliminary, but the preliminary performances, we have to narrow down the list and then look at the interviews, how the ladies speak, and then narrow it down again. And I'm always posting on my social media how difficult it is to narrow these candidates because especially if the batch is really, really strong. But when it comes to the competition, I believe it depends on what pageant they're competing in. Because for example, if you give me the same set of candidates, and if you ask me to make a leaderboard Miss Universe wise, I will have a different leaderboard. If Absolutely. you give me the same set of ladies, but for a Miss World pageant, I will have a different set of leaderboard. Because I feel like these pageants may sound the same to others, especially who are following the pageants, but these are actually different pageants. They are looking Absolutely. for different kind of candidates from a candidate. Absolutely. And right now, what 
struck me the most to a certain candidate is it changed. It definitely mm-hmm. changed a lot, especially when IMG took over Miss Universe. And it kind of affected other pageants in a way. Because before, when I do Miss Universe, we're only focusing on the walk and the beauty of the face. And that's how we make the list. That's how we create our favorite. But right now, the beauty of face doesn't... I mean, it, it's great that the candidate is beautiful. But if they are only relying on the beauty of face alone, it will not work anymore. Especially in this, in this year that we have for beauty pageants, you need to be a complete candidate. And I'm talking about presentation. And that involves your catwalk skills, the way you carry yourself. Interviews as well is very, very important. And it is highlighted in this time right now, not only in Miss Universe, but also in other pageants. So what struck me the most to a certain candidate, I believe it's really difficult to explain, to be honest. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. someone just have that spark. Yeah, like a pageant girl, right? That's what, you know, for us also when somebody enters, okay, Lisa, she's a model girl, she's a model face, oh, she's a pageant girl. So it's just the experience, I think, and also the innate voice inside you that says, okay, you know, probably she fits this exactly. particular category much more. And also the girls realize it eventually. So, Alan, can you tell me three elements that you look for? So, like, also you mentioned, about to ask the same thing. Thing. yeah, exactly. We want to know your top three in the hierarchy of one, two, three. Okay, when it comes to, I will be basing it on how I look at pageantry now. Um, not, number one is definitely the way the ladies speak. I consider this the most important factor right now because we have seen many, many, many beautiful candidates being left behind. And the reason primarily is because they didn't do well in interviews. So right now, my, ma- the, my main concern is number one, who can, the, someone who can really speak. But there's something into this as well, because we, ha- we have very smart speakers being ignored at the same time. But we have That's to right. remember, sm- smart speakers sometimes appear as boring, and mm. we do not need super intellectual speakers. We need someone who can connect. We need someone yes. who can relate to the listener. And that's, that's why it, there must be a balance between your speaking skills and your, del- your intelligence, I mean, and your delivery. Absolutely. Because what's the purpose of your message if your message will not be taken by your listener? So th- there needs to be a balance between the, your content and the way you deliver your message. So that's the most important thing for me. Number two is confidence. It's very important to have that confidence in presenting yourself. Because no matter how beautiful you are, but if if you don't have that confidence in personality when it comes to performance, it still wouldn't work. And finally, Absolutely. which I think is also important, someone who is true to herself. It's very easy to predict someone who is just pretending. And right now, pageant, party kind of candidate also doesn't work at the same time. So I would rather see a candidate who is true to herself and because you can really feel it. Once they speak, once they move on stage, it's kind of easy to detect someone who's just pretending and who's not real. That's why consistency is very important. So I will attach consistency to number three. Absolutely. I've always noticed whenever you do your uh, numbering, uh, from the time they win the contest, you start observing them from that, that time onwards. And how much does the presentation matter to you? Like you, We know about personal interview. You know you're supposed to be a well-spoken person. But how much does the presentation matter? Uh, this is something I think everybody needs to know. How does the presentation matter? I, be, I mean, if you're talking about the presentation when it comes to swimsuit and easing down, it still matters, especially in this time. Although... Although other would say, I mean, oh, I believe that interview is important, but we cannot deny the fact that this is still a beauty pageant. That walk still affects your performance in evening gown and swimsuit still affects. Because how can you prove that you are a good speaker if you cannot pass the swimsuit and evening gown round? So you need to have a balance of everything. Absolutely. So that's why many countries are like, many countries are like, Yes, our candidate is a strong speaker. Very good. Yes, yes. Okay. But uh, we have to remember 
that in order for them to prove that, they need to reach the final round. Absolutely. And in order to reach the final round, you still have to pass through swimsuits and evening gown. So it's still a balance of everything in order for you to get that elusive crown. All right. So, Alvin, uh, how does, uh, in your experience, all right, you have rated a couple of girls and you have a list. Has the table ever turned the other way around? And, you know, there are always dark horses in the race that probably yeah. fought with an invincible spirit towards the end. So how has your experience been with that kind of a probability that, you know, you had another list and then there's another list that comes by at the end of it? Well, as what you notice, my leaderboard, I'm doing it monthly because there's some progress every single month. Some candidates have shown extreme, I mean, tremendous transformation. Others hmm, kind of lie low a little bit. So that's affecting my monthly leaderboard. And when it comes to the finals, it still depends on the performances in the preliminaries. So that's how it affects the overall ranking. When it comes to dark horses, I am always open to that because we only, see, because us, for example, I'm only behind a laptop looking at this lady. So, so having said that, we, what I saw is very, what I'm seeing is very, very limited. So I'm only basing it on what I see on their performances. And let me just echo this as well, because when I make my prediction, people feel as if I know everything. No, I don't. Let me just say that prediction makes it, I mean, making prediction makes it very, very interesting because you do not know who will win. Because if, if everything is predictable, that's very boring. And let me just say this as well, that my prediction, my list of favorites is as important as other list of favorites. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And Alvin, tell me, you know, when uh, the candidate is or the delegate is on stage, when she's actually at the performance, okay, she has to maintain a lot of balance, equilibrium, and also composure. So how much of this particular element is important where she's holding herself, even in the time of duress, where she's under immense pressure and the entire world is looking at her? So when, when does this have to level up with the girl? From day one? Or how, how do you look at it? I believe the real competitions, I mean, it's really difficult to say, but as what I have, but, but as what I have noticed, the judges are basing everything on the preliminary. But okay. what, the moment they arrive, the competition starts from there. However, I have also heard one of the candidates that I've interviewed days ago, and she mentioned that the real competition starts from the moment they were crowned as a national title holder, which I kind of agree because when it comes to competition, it involves your preparation, your training, and how you can consistently maintain that or improve yourself. So I would say, I mean, we all have different ways to view it. I would say that the competition starts when they arrive because the judges can see them already. But to the other ladies, competition starts from the moment they were crowned. So either way, as long as you can maintain the momentum, as long as you can keep on improving and consistently maintain that until the finals, then we still have one views, I believe. Absolutely. Here's a question for you. What is the one thing that you look for very strongly in the delegate? This is by Ananya. One thing that I really do, as what I have said earlier, I really prefer to look at a candidate based on overall. Because for example, if I see this candidate, for example, let's, let me name some candidate, for example, Miss Russia in Miss Universe 2020. She is super beautiful. I mean, if this is a battle of the beauty of face, she would easily be in the top five. But she was not in my final prediction. She, simply because I feel like her performances didn't deliver. And based on the interviews that I have seen, I wasn't convinced as well in comparison to the interviews of other candidates that I placed in my top 20 in my final prediction. So again, it all goes back to a balance of everything. Who do I think can deliver in swimsuit, in evening gown, and most importantly, in the final question? All right, we have a very interesting question that popped up. Who is your favorite Miss India? So Shreya, that's for you. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's actually difficult to say because there's a lot of amazing candidates from India. I prefer not to answer yeah. that because, okay. again, as I said, there's okay. so okay. many candidates. Let me name three it's difficult to compare. <laughs> All right, all right. So, okay, let me, let me, me. Oh my gosh, it's difficult. It is. Oh my gosh, I am placed on the spot. Let me see. I'll put. I have Priyanka Chopra. Okay. This is in all in all pageants, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. I'll have Priyanka Chopra, Lara Data, and Sushmita Sen, the legend. Yeah, the legend. All right, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I think we're just and going up looking at them. And yeah, any of these last five years? <laughs> Adeline and Minakshi, my favorite. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you. Know you know, I've always me. wanted to see Minakshi in Miss Universe. All right. I'm, with this live session, I'm sure if she's hearing it, she will be on top of the world. And I hope the universe has a calling for her as well. Okay, Alvin, with okay. social media having its presence so strongly and connecting, you know, not like the earlier times where the connectivity used to happen the minute they reached the battlefield, right? Now it starts the minute you're crowned and then you're on Instagram and you're trying, trying to create a hype. So online versus reality, how would you explain your stance? Well, when it comes to online, there's a lot of things that ladies need to consider. Number one, here's, the, here's a tip that I'm going to advise all of the candidates that are competing or might compete in the future. Always be careful with what you post on social media, no matter how long you posted that, because let me tell you, pageant fans are crazy. And I'm talking about these people, especially once they see you as a threat, or especially the toxic fans who wanted to destroy your credibility. These people are going to dig up everything just Absolutely. to destroy you as a candidate. So we have seen that many, many times. The recent one this time is Miss USA. Someone dug up her Twitter post that was a long time ago, and they judged her as a homophobic candidate. I mean, these people are so good at digging up these old posts. So I would say to the candidate, an aspiring candidate, be careful with what you post. Not because you wanted to compete, but it's who you are as a person. And whatever you post, make sure that you can defend it and you can stand by it. And it reflects you as a person. When it comes to posting on social media, updates and everything, photo shoots, that's good. I really, really appreciate that because it's giving you more exposure. And someone actually who's buying, I was actually wanting to compete in Ms. Diva, messaged me days ago that one of her challenges is that she is not known. In the pageant world i will not mention her name but i told her many pageant admins pageant pages admin are so so nice so one thing that i would advise is connect with them ask Absolutely. them to post whatever you post and let me just tell you that once you have once you show people that you are a credible candidate many pageant fans who are following the pageants will see that and that's where you get recognized. Be recognized because of your quality. So Absolutely. don't worry because as long as you keep on posting quality posts about yourself, people will notice that. And that's the start of you gaining your followers. And finally, I will just echo what Werner said, the creative director of Miss South Africa. He mentioned in his Instagram that all of these posts on social media doesn't matter, which I agree simply because at the end of the day, it could help you. Let me gain followers, let people know about you. But at the end of the day, whatever you post doesn't affect the judging because it still depends on the performance. Even if you post 1,000 photo shoots in a month, it still wouldn't Absolutely. put you on the lead or above others. So it still depends on the performance. Again, no matter how many posts you have, if you will not deliver on the performance, you will it's still not, not get the crown. I would rather, exactly, I would rather see a candidate who doesn't, I mean, Miss Mexico, our winner, she is only famous because she was the first runner-up in Miss World. But if you check her post leading up to the crowning, she doesn't post that much, but still Absolutely. she won. She won. So, yes. Yes. There's a question related to social media uh, by Suhana. On the point of social media, 
is there anything as too much posting if yes how does one strike a balance between being active and inactive um too much posting i don't think there is because as long as it's as if it's still a personal choice as long as you think it is worthy of being posted go ahead post it it's your personal choice anyway and as what i have said even if it's not pageant as long as you're happy with what you have post it it doesn't matter what Absolutely. other people think go post that oh sweet that it's true i think what you know what judge <laughs> I think Alvin it's everything that comes from within. I think you just need to create a vibe and you need to resonate in people's heart. I think the minute you do that, you know half your battle is won and then it's your performance and that's how you put your best foot forward in a pageant. Exactly. All right. So Alvin, we have seen a great revolutionary changes in the pageantry world from high transformation. Like in fact, when I was in Miss India back ten years back, the cutoff was five seven. Today it's five three. That's a huge change. And I think diversity, accepting diverse beauty, and not really sticking to a particular you know frame or a particular body type or a particular you know aesthetics. I think we have come a very long way, and there is a good resolution. What what do you anticipate in the near future, and how do you see this going to another level I love that because we are showing that pageantry is more of an inclusive world because before we are limiting that we, we have these standards before that a beauty queen must be this must be that we have to yes. break that and with the victory of Zoe Beanie in 2019 yeah. that gave us a message that right now beauty is in all forms and that's what we would love to see we have to this is the reason why many people are engaged in cyberbullying because we do not recognize other form of beauty and if we see that being represented on stage being applauded and being recognized i believe the world will change and i truly mean that imagine australia this year she's all she only stands 5 3 yeah. but she she is exactly. more than her height and seeing exactly. her on that stage just proves that no matter how tall or how short you are you can be on the miss universe stage so imagine how many ladies did she inspire because of yes, that true. so all i wanted to see is representation because at the end of the day the most deserving winner will still win Absolutely, I think I totally agree. Yes, Alisa, go ahead. So I'm giving her a single. Can I ask? That that's the way. Yeah, we have that. It's okay. Uh, when it comes to work, what all do you see? I'm sorry. What is it again? Ah, uh, when it comes to ramp work, what all do you see? What? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. When it comes to okay. run walk what I will be uh, saying when it comes to uh, runway skills what are the elements you look for what's a strong runway walk what comes across as a strong runway walk Okay now when it comes to strong runway walks I would actually give an example based on who I've seen in Miss Universe I will although it's in Trump era one of the best swims of performance they have seen in Miss Universe was in 2008 with Colombia's Taliana Vargas and Venezuela's Nagana Mendoza who both finished as the final two I mean their performances was superb and I believe if you make a list of the top 10 best swims of performances they will always be and best walks on stage they will always be on top and when it comes to walk I believe it's all about the confidence the skills in catwalk also matters because no matter how confident you are if the catwalk skills are good it's the, we have seen many confident women on stage but the That's walk good. aren't that good so it's still a balance of skills and confidence in delivering that i think you need to yeah. ice your authenticity and i'm sure the lisa will agree and would like to elaborate to the viewers as well that you know you can get the skills and technique but what will give you an edge is when you ice it with your own essence and i think that's what is really important what do you have to say about that lisa oh, we only we only teach the basic <laughs> and then we need to understand what the personality of the contestant and the dedicated and then they we I agree. that's when they will be able to 
execute who they exactly are so my job is only to teach the basic and then it's their personality their element that comes out and as you said confidence if you know yourself you know your basics they will merge together Yes, very true. I completely very agree with that. As a candidate, you know you need to know your capabilities and what you can do when it comes to these skills. Because if you know you cannot do it, then don't do it. Because sometimes other ladies, we have seen many ladies who are trying so hard, doing so many turns, and at the end, losing the balance. So it, it you really have to look at yourself and evaluate yourself as well on what you can do. True. I think I simplicity can also yeah. take you. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, Alisa, that's your department. I'm, I just wanted to add that simplicity actually can also give you an upper hand in many places. Sometimes you can be simple, straightforward, and get your work done. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Elvin. Uh, so if we have to uh, pick between aesthetical versus eloquency, so how does the two work? in your eyes in your vision i would prefer someone who can really speak so i'll choose eloquence because again as what we have seen before as what i've said before we have already seen many beauties this past editions of this universe that are being ignored especially that beauty is subjective so what's beautiful to me may not be beautiful in the eyes of the judges but when it comes to speaking skills you can really spot someone who can speak when it comes to beauty We exist. I am very open to what they call this the surgical operation. It's normal. It's twenty twenty one. So let's just go ahead and accept that. I mean, but, but that's just me. If you have a different views on that, it's okay. But when it comes to surgical operations, you can do that if you wanted to improve yourself. Makeup can change how you look and beautify you. But when it comes to speaking skills, it takes years. And as I, I always say. If you have nothing in here, you cannot deliver in speaking. Absolutely, so, it's so true. I really, I really prefer eloquence because, yes. as what I noticed before, this is also the most difficult thing to train. Because yes. in order for us to train a candidate when it comes to public speaking, they already need to have someone, something here, and yes. they need to read so much. And what we can do in practicing and training. It's just to simply guide them on how they construct their sentences, on how they could have done it in a different way. But they need to already have that foundation in eloquence, because again, as what I have said, beauty is subjective. So I would prefer eloquence, and we have seen that in the past editions of Miss Universe, and even in other pageants, the great speakers are always dominating the semifinals and even winning. Absolutely, I, just I love think listening to you, you're so. Positive yes, it's just so, uh, it's so positive, and it just like it's so bang Thank on, right? You. Yeah, like, to the point, like you know, it's crystal clear. It's like water. It's super crystal clear. Uh, so uh, I think Thank you all my so gauge, uh, Alvin, it's the artification of content, which is very very important. So a, you could be knowledgeable, you you could be intellectual, but elements like humor, wit. Different, you know, just spicing your conversation, being a good storyteller. What What's your take on artification of content and being a good storyteller? I'm sorry. What's my take on what? On uh, being a good storyteller, like you know, sometimes when you answer, you shouldn't be very technical. It could be like a story, or maybe artification of content, like putting your icing and your essence to the answer. When it comes to answering questions, I actually prefer someone who. Can really give a personal experience rather than just giving a by the book response because it feels like it's too pageant party. We have heard that many many times. So giving an answer and then connecting it to your personal experience make it believable and make it very very personal. So I would suggest to anyone who wanted to compete, make it personal. Share your experiences as much as possible. And of course, delivery is also very important. The way you send your message, and more practice. Because although some people, although I also believe that question and answer and answering in front of a million of people is kind of a pressure and difficult. But with more practice, you can really do that. It takes practice to nail question and answers because sometimes the questions are just repeating. You know, yeah, all you need to do is just to practice them. 
and just like you, need to, you need to yeah you need to personalize add your touch give it just just speak out differently so that you stand out and you're not just boxed in one category yeah. at the end of the day. Yes, Alisa, you were you were. Does in wardrobe affect in pageant final result? Yes, I have always believed that a winning gown you can you can really see someone you can really feel if someone is about to win because of that winning aura and winning gown because I believe that they will not crown someone who doesn't look like a queen. Although I believe that we we believe that it. how you carry the dress matters but we cannot deny the fact that the dress still matters so True. when zozebini came out with that gown i mean wow all she needs to do is to deliver an answer because she already looked like a winner so it's very important for me as well especially for our viewers that you need to have that winning look that winning aura and if that includes a winning gown then go for it But I'm not talking about the overly done, overly made gown. I'm talking about a gown that is personalized to you, something that reflects your personality, and something that makes you look like a real winner. And I would also suggest that because we have been talking this many, many times, we are argue, we are actually talking about whether you'll have one gown in the semifinals and in the final, in the preliminary and in the finals, or. prepare your best gown in the finals if you ask me personally if you ask me personally i would prefer to have one single winning gown because the thing about saving the best gown for the finals is that you cannot be sure if you will make it in the evening gown round so what's the yeah, point of sure saving sure. that so use that in the preliminaries right away unless of course both of the gowns that you prepare are winning gown true absolutely yeah. this, that's a very important take and you this is related to the teens what qualities do you think teen pageants look for in a winner what do, what qualities i mean very good i really like that question and i will relate that to the winner of miss universe 2020 andrea meza she was not my predicted winner she was my first runner up but unlike other people who is complaining about her victory i was surprised as well because i thought peru would win too but i am not arguing simply because i believe that right this is the benefit of having the same judges in the preliminaries and in the finals right after preliminary swims at an evening gown right after the preliminary interviews they already have a winner Absolutely. the final show is only done just to sh- just to validate who they think deserves to win but in True. their head they already have a winner just like all of us who are following the pageant we watch the preliminaries we also have our own set of winners and that's what the judges have as well they already have their i want this woman to win now the only question is can she deliver that in the finals yeah. and that's what they need to do now for mexico she did not give the strongest answer But let me just repeat this. That 30 second response. I mean her answer was not the worst. I mean she's making point there. But it isn't the strongest as well. However, that 30 second answer as long as it don't mess it up like real mess it up like not answering the oh, well that's a different story because you're not going to win. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm talking about the 30 second response. is very there is just a short time compared to what the judges have heard during the preliminary interview where the, these ladies spoke for like 6 to 10 minutes so compared to the 30 seconds i mean these judges know their quality already in the preliminaries so i would say make yourself memorable in the preliminary so i think just to create that indelible mark right in that particular stage is very very important Absolutely. Exactly. Okay, I mean, remember South Af. No problem. Please carry on. I mean, remember Tamarine Green. Yes, Tamarine yes. Green, Miss South Africa in 2018. Who would have thought that she would make it to the top five after that evening gown fiasco? Her gown wasn't the best. I mean, she was struggling when she walked. I mean, it was an obvious struggle. But why do you think she made it to the top five? because the judges already know her quality as a contender 
So it doesn't yes. matter if she's not the best in evening gown, she deserves in the top five. And that's why Absolutely. she was there and finished as first runner up. Absolutely. Perfect. And according this, to this, you, how many months should you invest in preparing yourself before your main pageant, be it your audition, be it your national or international? How many months do you think it takes to prepare yourself? Like we know it, but according to you. <laughs> yeah, I find that difficult to answer simply because Venezuela, for example, are preparing more than a year for their candidates. But there are cases where they don't make it. Well, there are also candidates who prepared for a short time, but they still win. I believe it's all about, for national pageant, I believe it's all about choosing the most appropriate and the most prepared candidate who can nail it if she will go and compete now. I mean, that's why when I make prediction for a national pageant, I am not talking, I'm not looking at who do I think should win Miss Diva on a Miss Diva quality. I am looking at who do I think will do well in Miss Universe. That's what they need to focus on. If the pageant will happen tomorrow, who do I think is the most ready to compete in Miss Universe? So I believe it's all about choosing the most ready of all the candidates. We have some very interesting questions. And um, so one of our followers are asking, what are your thoughts on Mansa, our reigning Miss India? Wow, she's really, really good. Actually, she's been number one. She's leading. She's never been out of my top three in my leaderboard in Miss World. And I have always believed that if she will deliver, wow, India might take home another Miss World crown, which is kind of expected since you are a powerhouse in Miss World. All I can say is she is a very strong representative. All she needs to do is to maintain that and keep on improving until the finals. But then again, Miss World is a difficult pageant to predict because it really depends on who Julia wanted to work with. But as long as Manasa will do her homework and assignment, I believe she will perform. Uh, can you please give advice for girls auditioning for the first time in a national pageant? Girls auditioning for the first time. I would say never be intimidated by the competition. Because many people are... Because in a national pageant, m most of the time, many ladies are competing who are already well known. So all I can say is, if you believe that it is your time to compete, because you can tell, you can feel if it's your time to compete or not. And if you believe that it is your time to compete, go and compete. But of course, what goes down in there is that you have already made some self-evaluation, self-assessment that you can perform. And whoever it is that you're competing with, as long as you have so much faith in yourself that you can deliver, do it. Just do it. That's all I wanted to say. And Just the team do is it there. if you feel like it's the right time. And the team is there to mold you and make you even better, to empower you further. Exactly. There's no such thing as losing. I don't believe in failure. It's either you win or you learn. Learn absolutely, absolutely. There's a very interesting uh, question uh, from Ananya. How to be professional and personal in front of the delegates and contestants? How to be professional? I believe it's not really. I'm talking about if you wanted to be professional just for the sake of pageantry, then that's faking it. So I would rather act like how you wanted to act. Act in a decent way. La act like how, how a queen would act. But at the same time, be you. And yes. act, because if you are yourself, if you know yourself, you know that you're competing. You know that you're not supposed to do this. You should know that you're not supposed to do these things. So as long as you stay true to yourself and know yourself as well and what you need to do, then that's what you really need to do. Because again, as what I've said, if you are just, uh, you know, it's just me though. If you're just doing it for the sake of pageantry, it's like faking it still. And no one can fake it for a long time. It will still be noticed if you are not consistent with your yeah. act. Absolutely. 
so you know many a times alvin you know you get very hyped on social media all right how important it is to be grounded because you can get carried away at the end we're humans right so all the paparazzi all the attentions can actually you know get you carried away or maybe you, you know can get modest but then how important it is to be very grounded focused with what your goals are and to forge with that invincible spirit you know what i am very open when i, I have talked to many candidates before and they have told me that some of them are not watching leaderboards because they don't want to be pressured some of them are watching leaderboards because they wanted to learn and improve themselves so i believe that it is very important to listen to the opinion of others but at the same time focus on what you think is right for yourself if you are being overhyped then if their opinion you cannot control that then just carry on with your training carry on with your preparation while on the other hand if you are not being noticed just continue improving because the right Absolutely. people will now notice and recognize that i mean focus on what you think you should do because people have different opinion judges have different opinions so as long as you know in yourself that you are improving that you're doing your best i believe that's the most important thing and how, how do somebody... we somebody Sorry, sorry, I think we have overlapping. No worries, I'm done. You can carry on, Alicia. Okay, if if a representative has a medical condition, uh, which should be only considered as a finalist but not a winner, what what's your take on it? Wow, that's an interesting question. Let me think of that. well as a winner because you are going to represent the organization especially if we go back to normal you'll doing you'll be doing a lot of traveling so as long as it will not hinder your act your job as a title holder then i believe you can be a winner but again as what i've said but if it will truly affect your performances uh, your travels and your other work i believe the judges might consider that as well Again it all depends if you can do things regardless of what you are feeling when it comes to those medical conditions but know yourself as well and this is the most important thing about knowing yourself do you think you can handle all these travelings all these less sleep all the unpredictable uh, unpredictable events do you think you can handle that with your medical condition know yourself If you think you can handle it, then go. No one will stop you. But if you think Absolutely. you can't, then be honest with yourself. True. I think that's very important because it's at the end it's a competition so you need to be your best at all times. So Alvin, I have another question. Yes, How exactly. do we keep the name players at bay? You know because they're going to have you know people are going to have you know your own sets of opinion that could be good, bad, it could have unwanted noise around you. But how does a delegate keep forging ahead? how can a delegate keep forging ahead i believe focus on your inner voice and it's actually one of my favorite quotes that always listen to your inner voice because there's a lot of background noise there so filter what you need to listen filter all the comments that you get if you think it could help you take it if you think it will destroy you ignore it and then whatever you take in use that to improve yourself And again always focus on your self self evaluation is always very important and I will I will always keep on saying that if you know yourself you know what to improve and you know what you need to develop but it also it is also aside from your self evaluation it is also very important to ask help from professionals just ask their opinion and take it Absolutely. constructively as well I think it's very important you take feedback in a very positive way because that's only going to help yeah. you to introspect and be very self reflective about a lot of things which will give you a leverage at the end of the day. All right Alvin before Agreed. We, yes before we actually sign off I want you to give a message to all aspirants who are planning to be beauty queens or want to be what is your key message to them? Oh, thank you very much. My message to those people who really wanted to join beauty pageant is know yourself and find your purpose and on why you are joining these pageants. Because the simple question, why do you think you should be the next Miss 
whatever pageant it is, it may sound a simple question, but I actually find it very, very important because there's something deeper into it. There's no right answer to that question. And that's where you can test the honesty and the, how the contestants are being real with themselves. So if I am going to give any advice, first of all, know your time. Assess yourself. When do you think is the right time for you to compete? Next is keep on improving. Take any advices, but do it in a constructive way. Again, as what I've said earlier, filter what you take in and ignore what you don't need. And most importantly, be true to who you really are. Do not copy anybody because in this world of pageantry right now, we do not want it to crown a 2.0 of the previous queen. We wanted to see something new. And please do not focus on saying, I wanted to be the next this. I wanted to be the next. Be you. Be the yes. next you. Create your new, create an image for you. Because that's what we wanted to see. That's a so hashtag. True. Be you worth it. Be, be you, worth you worth it. it. <laughs> that's what we believe in. And we yeah. want I think everybody to be and think and it's go ahead feeling that they are worth it. It's the delegate that makes everything worth it around her. I think that's what a delegate has to do. Make everything around her worth it. Exactly. All right, Alvin. It was such a pleasure to have you on board. And I think it was so insightful, so informative. And, you know, we had a great time. Thank you once again. A lot of love from India, a lot of gratitude. And hoping we'll have many more sessions as the months pass by and always keep this connectivity between the Rao sisters and Alvin. Thank you so much, Alvin. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I truly enjoyed this. It's great to share this as well because I know many pageant aspirants are watching. So I really hope you learned a lot. I have already shared what I could share. So thank you so much for inviting me. I truly enjoyed it. Thank you. We thank you so much, Alan. Thank you thank very you so much, much. Alan. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.